Welcome to the Podski. I'm your host, the man of a thousand gimmicks, John Baker, and love is in the air. It's Valentine's Day week. Hopefully everyone had a really good Valentine's Day, and we are going to be celebrating Valentine's Day here on the Podski with, we are bringing in the ladies on this edition. We have uh, myself and Allison, and we're bringing in Mr. and Mrs. Andretti. And we're going to play a little game at the end, but before we get into that, uh, Andretti and I are going to cover some current event stuff like we always do. Maybe we might take a tangent down, uh, tangent town. So uh, welcome into the pod ski, Andretti. How are you, man? Happy to be here as always. Yeah, happy to be here as well. And uh, what are your pronouns this week? Oh, man, I think it's going to have to be Brian Keith and um, um, Ken Patera. <laughs> <laughs> there's a match made in hell for you right there <laughs> if somebody books that match i'm gonna blow my brains out i don't do not want to see that match <laughs> those are the first two wrestler names that came to my mind <laughs> how the hell did that happen uh i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna i even got uh, two worse names i'm gonna do i'm gonna do eugene <laughs> and orlando jordan Oh my god! Oh my god! It's only because I watched SummerSlam 05 uh, on throughout the weekend, like as I'm doing chores and stuff, and Chris Benoit squashed him in, uh, squashed Orlando Jordan in like five seconds in the in the curtain jerker of that show, and then later on, Eugene had a match with somebody I can't remember who it was now, but I just popped whenever I remembered that whenever I had the under baker account on twitter which i still have you can go check it out at t under baker on twitter i have some great tweets on there he uh i sent him a tweet saying that i was going to send him some uh dead man cookies from the uh undertaker or from the under baker account and he liked it and then unliked it right away when he realized <laughs> that it was a fake account <laughs> but i have the screenshot so i have the receipts that's awesome. Yeah, I, I I I thought of the word wrestler in my brain, and the first image that showed up in my brain was the Ken Patera LJN figure. So, God, it's been a long day. It has. Last week was such a long week. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, did you watch any wrestling this weekend? I did, man. I did a lot. I watched a lot of stuff. So I, I finally caught up on that. Um, the HOG show they did from uh, what day was that? I think I have it here from the from the third from February third. Um, they kind of did like a um, like a Jay Briscoe mem- uh, memorial show. And it, it was it was really good. They had a lot of good people on there. Those those House of Glory cards are really good, man. They're, they're always good shows. They always have a lot of good talent on there. I think they, um, I think they run out of New York City, if I'm not mistaken. But um, you know, uh, uh, Jacob Fatu was in the main event. Um, always love seeing that guy, you know, do his thing. Big, physical, strong guy that is just a, an ass kicker. Um, but I've really kind of grown too to to appreciate um, Loki. Um, he was in MLW for a long time. He might still be in MLW, but you know, he's been he's been a, a, a veteran for 20 years, man. You know, he's always having great matches, especially at his age. But that match with him and um, um, Charles Mason was was really good on that show. Loki Loki's uh, is is pretty damn good still. Um, the, I remember people talking about him a lot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know who else was on there? Leo Rush was on that card too. He was in like a like a six way match. Um, I wasn't I wasn't super familiar with the other guys that he was in there with. But man, I I could watch Leo Rush matches all day long, man. Did he retire right after? I think he made a retired, then recorded an album in the ring and released it, and then came back and then <laughs> retired. <laughs> Uh, talk about somebody that just loves to retire and then come make a comeback. That guy's so good. He's so good. Yes, he is. Um, Brian Keith was on there too. You know, you know, I love, I, I love Brian Keith. It's like uh, Clint Eastwood. You know, had a had a kid with a with Bad News Brown, like a, a ninja version of Bad News Brown. So with that <laughs> with that snarl, but 
man, I love me some Brian Keith. I love the bounty hunter. You know that. Uh, yeah. But that, those were those were the notes I had from the HOG show. But I watched. Um, I started dabbling a little bit in um, getting back into AAA and getting back into CML CMLL a little bit too. Like I, I hadn't watched you know lucha wrestling in a really long time, man. But I'm kind of digging it. They they got a lot of really good free stuff on both of those YouTube pages um, pe that people can go check out. There's a there's an awesome match on the AAA YouTube right now that just got posted a couple of days ago between um, Vikingo and Bandito, which is awesome. So go check that out if you get. Um, if you get, you know, 30 minutes, you want to kill and watch, want to watch an awesome match for sure. Yeah. I did. So when you watch those, um, Lucha shows, are you watching them in Spanish? Yes. Okay. How hard is that? It's, it's not, it's not the hardest thing in the world because I, I I'm doing Duolingo and I'm picking up a little bit here and there, but it's, it's hard when they talk, they talk really fast. Right. I mean, that it's just like you and I are talking right now. So it's kind of hard to pick up, kind of hard to pick up things, you know, in, in conversation. But if I put the subtitles on, um, I can usually pick up stuff pretty, pretty, pretty well with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it kind of, you know, it, it's just, it's the atmosphere too, man. I mean, that's, that's what it is. You know, so I kind of want to, I kind of want to be immersed in, in what they have to offer. And then I think it's, it's, it's better to have it in, in, uh, in Spanish, you know, and, and look, I know I sound like a hypocrite because I love Kevin Kelly and I love the new Japan stuff and I love listening to him, but I think with the, with the Lucha Libre, for whatever reason, I, I enjoy listening to it in, in Spanish. Yeah. I don't think I've ever watched any of those shows. I, I mean, I've tried to watch triple mania a couple times, like just like the clips and stuff like that, just cause there's just insanely athletic, like acrobatics that you just don't see in everyday wrestling. It's a completely different style of wrestling. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of that stuff, man. I mean, I, I watched, um, I watched this, uh, this dream wave show from, from the, the 11th from, uh, you know, two nights ago. Um, you know, it's a promotion I'm not super familiar with. Um, obviously they spent some money to, in, to get, uh, to get these people there because I mean, Nick Aldis was on that show. Mike Bennett was there. Gringo Loco, Vikingo, Taurus, Tarus, I guess, um, Ray Horace, Hammerstone, Lince Dorado were all on that card. Um, I mean, it, it, it was, it was great. It was really great. It, and it was, it's on the, um, it's on the IWTV subscription that I have. It's only like, you know, eight bucks a month or whatever it is, but I get, I get a lot of mileage out of that thing, man. I, I watch all the time. I watch shows every night. I watch indie shows from all over the place. And it, you see a lot of really cool stuff, but I mean that, that match with that, with the Luchas, man, all four of them, it was Vikingo, you know, Ray Horace, Black Tarus and, and Gringo Loco all in the ring together, man. I mean, those guys tore the house down, man. I mean, Vikingo, that guy is as advertised. I mean, he he is a special talent. He really is. I mean, everybody in that match was great, and he still stood out above those other guys. And and after after the match, um, Gringo Loco said that they had really bad flight problems um, getting out of Tijuana, and, and apparently all those guys slept on the floor in the airport. So you know, from for all of us wrestling fans, man, thank you <laughs> because you guys. I know you guys probably went through a, a terrible ordeal to to do that, but. I mean that you you guys tore the house down with that man. That was it was awesome to see that. Yeah, that I'm really excited to see Vikingo. Uh those guys on the observer, they love him so much. And they talk about him all the time. Yeah, I, I can't I've never watched a match. Uh we will see him WrestleMania week. Yeah. Uh, so super excited about that. But yeah, I'm really excited to see some Vikingo myself. Yeah, what one thing too about those luchas, man. I mean, it's it's so amazing to see what they do with the incredible acrobatics in the ring and in, in, in different rings and on the ropes. I mean, those are, those are totally different rings, totally different ropes than what they're, than what they're familiar with. Like if you're, if you're in a WWE, like I, I would bet that the ring and the ropes are pretty similar, um, you know, show by show. Right. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, but when you, when you're in there doing this stuff across a hundred different promotions and a hundred different rings that, you know, 500 different people set those rings up there's got to be a difference there and to see the talent be able to perform the way they do on rings that they're unfamiliar with and unfamiliar ropes man it's really really impressive i never really thought of it like that but yeah like for the listeners that don't know wwe is the only promotion out there that uses a 20 by 20 ring and they use real ropes for their uh, ropes like the ring ropes they are real ropes uh, uh other promotions every other promotion that you could possibly think of they use cables as the ring ropes and i believe they work in 16 by 16 i think that's majority of what you're going to see most of the time i believe is a 16 by 16 so there's a lot more square footage in a wwe ring versus what you'll see in an AEW 
or a um, an Impact or any per indie show like GCW or any of these lucha shows. I'm I'm pretty. I don't think maybe New Japan runs a bigger. They might have a bigger ring, but I don't think the ropes. I think the ropes are in a little more because they have a bigger apron area. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they're. I'm pretty are. sure that they use cables as well. They don't use ropes. I'm pretty sure yeah. that WWE is the only promotion that uses real ropes. Um, the other thing I had from that show, man, like I don't know what it is, but but sometimes like you can't really get a good a really good like perception of how big people are sometimes. But in that in that match, for some reason in the match with with Hammerstone and Lindsay Dorado, obviously Dorado is smaller than him. I'll tell you what, man, <laughs> Hammerstone looks like a million bucks in the ring. I mean, he is enormous. That guy's like, he's got to be like, he's like 6'1", 255, man. I mean, he, he's like a, a more athletic Luger. And sometimes he actually kind of reminds me of Sid a little bit too. And look, those are, neither of those guys are bad people to be compared to, but I would say Hammerstone is definitely more athletic than both of those guys. I mean, he, he just looks like a killer right now, man. He's a big, super muscular, athletic guy, man. He, he's, he's awesome. I remember back in like the pandemic, he wanted to be like a Scott. He wanted to be like a more athletic, better version of what Scott Steiner was. And that's what he, that's whenever I first discovered him through the pandemic. And I remember seeing a lot of stuff that he was saying that that's what he wanted to do. So I can definitely totally see that. He definitely is awesome and an enormous human being. I mean, he, for the, for his size, he, he's not really sacrificed any mobility or any athleticism, man. And it's no, pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, so, uh, but yes, as I mentioned, I watched, I, I skipped around, so I made it to SummerSlam or Survivor Series 97 in my journey, and then I switched over to a, a deeper into the Ruthless Aggression. So I started at WrestleMania 21, and I am at SummerSlam 2005, so there's some really good stuff on there. I that the uh, This weekend was the first time I ever watched the... Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio for the custody of uh, Dom Mysterio match. I never watched that match ever in my life, and I watched it from beginning to end, and I thought it was fantastic. I don't like I, Yeah, I, I can't express how awesome that match was, and I would encourage everyone to go watch that match. It was incredible. And the I, I didn't finish SummerSlam yet, but the... um. Other match that was on there was JBL and Cena. Uh, I think Triple H was out at that point because he had that neck injury that he got from Rosie. <laughs> um, and then the main event is Hogan versus Michaels. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we actually had some pretty noteworthy stuff, at least in the world of WWE this week. We had a really cool Cody and Paul Heyman promo on raw, which was fantastic. Did you get to see any of that? Unfortunately, the, I did not catch raw because it didn't record and I did not catch SmackDown because it didn't record, but I did see the stuff that you sent me. So I saw the whole, I saw the whole interaction between Heyman and Cody. I thought it was some of the best promo work that WWE has done in like 15 years. Because they just let them go out there and do their thing. That's exactly it. Is there they they hired really talented people and they're letting them do their thing and, and just giving them hints of what to say and make sure they intertwine instead of giving them a script and telling them every sentence to come out of their mouth. And that's the difference between how good it is right now and how bad it was a year ago. Yes. And the way that they made it personal and they made you not forget about Sammy, but they made you think that yes, this is bigger. This match between Cody and Roman is bigger than the Sammy versus Roman match at Elimination Chamber. So I thought it was extremely well done. And Paul Heyman is a wizard. He's yeah. so good at all of this. He's fantastic. Yeah. And um, but yeah, it, he, I don't know if he actually, if Cody actually did get him, like if he made him crack during that promo. Probably did. To, Hats off if he did. I don't, either that or Heyman is one hell of an actor. I'm not yeah. sure of that. Uh, but yeah, and then that kind of led into SmackDown, where 
Uh, Heyman comes out and he talks about what Cody had done over Monday night. And then Sammy works his sneaks into the ring and they have an interaction where uh, basically Sammy just told him that, you know, the bloodline is over and you know that it's over. And then they went to that tag team championship match with uh, the Usos versus um, G.I. Stro and Ricochet, which I want to like them as a tag team, but I just like, I can't, I can't fully commit to it. I don't know. I, like, think, I mean, they, well, they threw them together to feed them, right? That's, that's all it is. They just, it's two guys they that they put together to, to feed to the Usos. Yeah. And it, I don't know if they were trying to go with like a Kane and X-Pac type vibes. Like that's, that's what the WWE likes to do. They like to pair an enormous man with a smaller man. For tag teams and so it fits the wwe bill but then uh jay ends up showing up last second to uh defend his title with his brother and they retain and then as jay is walking through the garage uh, he sees sammy and they you know interact and you know uh, sammy said that i acknowledge you not roman and they did a little fist bump and then they kind of that's like midway towards the end of the show then at the end of the show they said that roman wasn't at the show tonight he was watching on television and then Heyman walks up to jimmy and said you don't need to come next week you're supposed you need to stay home and you need to watch the show because it's not always about what you see uh it's not it's not always about somebody being there it's what you see when they're not around and alluding to the fact that Roman saw Sammy give Jay the fist bump, and it's so that's going to be the storyline next week, which is really smart. It made us feel as viewers as though we're not stupid, right? Because we all know that Roman wasn't there. He was they they said it early. He's watching television. He's watching it from his home, so we automatically know that he's watching and he saw what happened on TV, and it's going to be addressed next week. I thought that was fantastic. And I, I love how big it makes that belt feel yes. that he is part of the two biggest stories in the company. Yes. And it really makes Reigns feel like a monster champion. Yes, it really does. They're doing such a good job with this. And I don't know what they're planning for WrestleMania with Sammy. Obviously, they're not. I mean, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry that Sammy isn't going to win that title. I'm interested to see how they get to that point, but I'm really interested to see how they work Cody in after that angle because everyone's going to be really upset. Like, does Cody come to save Sammy at some point? Like, is that how they work? Co would you think that would be how they would work Cody? Would you even put them both in the in the same vicinity together? I don't know if I would. I mean, I, it's there, there's so many different things they could do that could probably all work out, but. You know, getting Cody versus Sammy at some point down the road, I think it might might work out too. But I almost feel like they've got to get Zayn out of that picture so that they can focus just on just on Rhodes and, and Reigns at that point. But um, look, I know it's probably the most predictable route to go to have Owens and Owens and Zayn, you know, beat the beat the Usos for the tag belts. But that's probably the smartest way to go at this point. And that's that's been the issue with WWE. They don't like to give you the obvious finish, although they, that's what they they gave us all of those things, the Royal Rumble. Now the Triple H is there just because we can predict and we know it's going to happen. As long as you do it well, it doesn't matter. Right. We've all been saying that for years. Uh, but I don't know. I there was a aside from WWE this week. We went really hard on AW last week, rightfully so, and I only have more. I, it doesn't make me feel any better what they did last week going into this pay-per-view now. And Revolution is, I'm pretty sure Elimination Chamber is this weekend, and Revolution is. is the week after. It is. I think I think uh, uh, Elimination Chamber is Saturday or Sunday this week. Okay, well, I'm really excited for that. I'm just, I don't know what. I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm totally lost with everything AEW is doing right now, and I don't understand what that MJF promo was last week. 
I don't understand the Katie Vick vibes that it gave off. I don't understand why he has to do that. I've had a lot of time to sit and think. We've had we've all had days to sit here and think about it and process it. And we we none of us have gotten good vibes off of it. All we keep is getting pissed off about it. So I have serious concerns about what this revolution pay-per-view is going to look like. And uh, the only other AEW thing that I saw this weekend was that uh, CM Punk posted a thing about forgiveness on his uh, story. I, I think it's him coming back. They need him back. <laughs> the worst way. I'm literally think, whether they back. whether Chris Jericho likes it or not, they need uh they need CM Punk back in that back in that promotion, man. At this Listen, point, I, I mean, look, Chris, the, Chris, we said we said it before. The the, the wrestling at Revolution is going to be great. I mean, you got MJF in there with Danielson. They're going to tear the house down for sixty minutes. I mean, it's going to even even the 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 women's match. Um, with the the three on three is going to be good. Everybody in, in it's going to be in that match is very talented. All the matches are going to be awesome. And the the great thing about those pay per views, from the AEW standpoint, is that they go they go back to back to back to back really quick, and they've got really good matches on those cards. There's not a lot of screwing around on those pay per views. So when you get in there, they're going to get five or six matches, you know, plus the pre show matches, whatever it's going to be, and everything will be great. It'll be really great, and it'll it'll make you forget that the build to all of those matches has not been good. And that's just what, that's just frustrating because you're trying to build a company and you're trying to like make this thing profitable. But like, if you don't make people want to buy the show, like how does that, you know what I mean? That's where, that's kind of where I'm going with it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, they need, for me, they, there's a huge hole in that roster and that hole is punk and, you know, Chris Jericho, he can boohoo around all he wants, but he's no dummy when it comes to doing business. He knows who butters the bread, and rightfully so, Jericho does do that. But you know, the big fish in the ocean is CM Punk, and he's the needle mover for them. And without him, they've they sorely lacked. So he's not the healthiest guy in the world either. You know, they if they're going to bring him back, they got to get they got to get the as many miles out of that as he possibly can at this point. Because, I mean, the clock's ticking on that guy too, man. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, but that, the, the MJF stuff, you know, here we are, you know, five or six days later after the, after the, the, the show. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to see it because, you know, it took Ric Flair 40 years to become a cartoon character of himself. And it feels like, MJF is be is quickly becoming a cartoon version of himself. I mean, I don't need him screaming every second of every day when he's on TV, man. Mm -hmm. We don't need it. We don't need goofball stories to get more heat. We know you're a heel. You know, we love you for it, for better or worse, you know. But at some point, there's just things that are just stupid. And I thought, I thought that that was kind of dumb. Um, but him screaming all the time, man, I can do without it. I don't, I don't need you out there acting like a buffoon, you know, every, every week screaming into the, into the microphone. Yeah. His, he does so much yelling all the time. Like you don't always have to give that promo every time. Like I know Ric Flair did it, but like he was Ric Flair. Like, I don't know. I, I, I I am very much down on the AEW product right now, and I don't. Well, it's know. been it's him as champ has been a little underwhelming, you know. And again, they're <laughs> going to have an awesome match at it, it, right that pay per view. I mean, Brian Daniels has never had a bad match in his life, and he's going to have an awesome match at the pay per view with with him, and probably make MJF look really well in the process, and hopefully it'll turn things you know for the better. But right now, it just doesn't feel like they're they're doing real well with that with that uh, main event picture. Well, you know, we said this back at the last pay-per-view. Let's get this booking in the right way and, like, let's start telling really good stories and let's get back on track. And here we are at the next pay-per-view. And we're right back where we were before the last pay-per-view. Let's get through this pay-per-view to get to the better stories. And we're not getting them. So well, I think we'll, we'll get, I think we'll get a better idea of what the card's going to look like after, after this upcoming Wednesday. Because there's still there's still some stuff that's got to get finalized here. Yeah, it seems like they're taking they take a long time. Like I liked in the early days of AEW when they would announce those shows and those matches ahead of time, and then they would build to them. Now it's like we don't know what we're doing, and then we cram everything in the last two weeks, and then boom, it's the the show. 
I don't always like that that car crash style of booking, but that's what gets people to buy. So that's what they're going to keep doing. But I don't disagree with that. I don't know. Anything else that you watch this week or uh, want to cover? You know the the, the, tag, the tag team. I know we talked about the tag team scene a little bit with uh with AEW too, but you know it's. I think it, it was too soon to put that on the guns. It doesn't. It doesn't leave me with a better taste in my mouth <laughs> five days later than it did when it happened. You know. Yep. So we'll see how we'll see where they go with that. But playing hot potato with any belt, I, in my opinion, is a mistake. Um, and putting the belts back on the acclaimed, whether it's Billy, you know, turning on his own kids or joining his own kids or whatever it is. And the acclaimed end up somehow winning those belts back. I'm not a fan of that either, man. No, I'm not either. So I do think they got to strike when the iron's hot too. And, you know, and Takesha is hot right now when they got to put a belt on him. And I think they, I mean, Orange Cassie does not need that belt, you know, put, put the all Atlantic belt at the very least on that guy and let give us a fresh face to cheer for. Well, see, if we would say that, I would like to see Takeshita in ROH. But we don't know what the thing is with ROH. And we got, because now we're, once we get through Revolution, we got Supercard of Honor that's going to be coming up. And that's going to be full of AEW guys since it's an AEW property now. And after Supercard of Honor, we're going towards Dynam or uh, Double or Nothing. So. I don't really know the direction. Like it usually seems pretty clear the direction that they're going, but I don't I don't know the direction. I think that's why I'm or at least I'm I I, I can't figure out what the direction is. So I can't fantasy book, I guess, in my mind, which is what I'm not happy about. I guess is a good way to put it. Sure. No, I I don't I don't disagree with that. Um hey, speaking of elimination chamber, did they since I didn't see the shows, did they um did anybody else get named for the, any of the matches? Yes. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. I guess I could have pulled it up too. But I didn't even, didn't even think about it until right now. Let's see here. Let's see what this card is here. Matches. So the matches are Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Okay, fine, whatever. The uh, so the number one contenders match in the elimination chamber is Carmella, um, Nikki Cross, Raquel Gonzalez, Oscar, Liv Morgan, and Natty. And what they did on <laughs> I can hear you <laughs> sigh hard on that. <laughs> can I get two of them, and you can put push the other ones back into catering for a couple hours? <laughs> can I get Can I get Oscar and Raquel, and you can just leave everybody else in the back? Well, what they did is that they brought out Natty and then Natty and Shayna Baszler were uh, going back and forth and how like Shayna Baszler was saying about how, you know, she did all this before Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey followed in her footsteps and then Rousey's music hit. And it looks like Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey are going to make a tag team together. So okay. that I'm fine with that. Yeah, that that's at least interesting. Any Anything that gets that gets Baszler more on TV, because I think she's. She's awesome. I, I, I've always liked her. I love her in NXT. I'm mm -hmm. um, actually, I have a, a friend of mine that is from the same town as her. And uh, my friend has told me multiple times that um, whenever Baszler would come, would come in, you know, she would be the first person to be buying everybody drinks and, and super friendly with everybody in town. So that kind of, that kind of, you know, made, makes me think really highly of her too, but that's a good tag team. You know, look, you're not doing anything with either one of them, you know, so put them in a, put them in a tag team and let them go after the women's belts. And those are very credible, very credible contenders for sure. Agreed. But uh I the, the putting putting Natty in that match is not a bad idea in that elimination chamber. Now that I think about it, because like you want you want somebody in there who's a veteran that can kind of be a, a a traffic a, a traffic cop if need be, you know. So having having her in there, I think, is probably a good idea. Right, and I think that's probably the only reason why she's in there—a good veteran presence that can put, piece it all together and all that. So, uh, and then the uh, men's elimination chamber is the United is for the United States Championship, which I love. I love putting a mid card title for it. Uh, we got Montez Ford, Johnny Gargano, um, Bronson Reed, Austin Theory, who is the champion, Seth Rollins, and Damian Priest. I mean, that is an amazing lineup. That is going to be an awesome match. That if you, it's hard to find better people to put in there, man. Yes, like that is a home run of a 
of a group of dudes to put in a chamber. I mean, that, I I might even go as far as to say that that might be the best the best group of people that have ever been there in there together. I would agree. Uh, and then the only thing that is left is the main event, which is for the undisputed championship, and it's Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. Be ninety minutes. <laughs> That's going to be a long one. With them, with them walking into the ring, it'll be 90 minutes of them standing around. Um, I, I don't know where, I don't know which way they're going to go with that. I mean, it seems like the, the most likely thing is that they're going to, they're going to have Reigns win and something happens and, you know, try to remove Sammy from that main event picture. But, you know, look, man, I, I wouldn't put it past them to, to do something where Sammy wins that match. And I know that might be unfamiliar, like a, an un, unconventional um, answer, but, you know they're in his hometown, man, and things are things are different now. <laughs> there's there's new there's new sheriffs in town in the WWE. So if they've got some kind of a creative way to have Reigns lose that belt and have you know Reigns go on a tear and start killing everybody and then somehow climb back into that main event picture as a uh, as a contender, um, and you put you keep you keep you know Cody until SummerSlam. I mean, there's look, I'm not saying do that, but I think that that's a possibility to do that. But I think I think we'll get reins and we'll get reins in, in, in uh, roads at, at Mania. But um, it's not it's not Don't the end of the I world if they do something crazy with with Sami Zayn. If if Vince still had the book, I would uh, I would believe that would be the case. But if we don't get roads and reins at Mania, I will I will riot. From I our- mean, Z- Zayn and Rose is not the end of the world, but that would probably end up making roads not the not the baby face and that's where it's a little bit a little bit like where they won't but they they probably won't go that route they would turn him into aew cody right away yeah which would suck but uh yeah that uh elimination chamber is saturday at 8 p.m good guys time not on andretti time (laughs) and that is on peacock so if you got if you got the cock, you can fire it up on Saturday night and watch some good old wrestling because it actually is a pretty interesting card. Honestly, it is. It's a good card. And, and look, I, I don't think I don't think that they're not going to give people reigns in, in rows. I don't think that, and I don't, I don't think that that Zayn will, will win the belt either. But you know, it, it it still would be interesting if they've got a really good plan for how to do that. But I, I don't think I don't think that'll happen, and I'm not even saying it should. No, I, yeah. If they got a really creative way to get out of that with Sammy, with the people not wanting Sammy to be champion, then, then they've, they've done their job, which I think they will. So, uh, but we'll see how that goes on a Saturday. Should, yeah. Should be, should be a great show, man. I, I'm super looking forward to that main event. I am too. I'm really excited for all the, the whatever, everything at WWE. I hate, I hate to say this because I, it, this has not been the case for a very long time. But I actually really like everything that WWE is doing. It's actually incredibly refreshing. I mean, outside of outside of the some of the buffoonery in NXT, I I, I agree. Wow. Yeah, uh, that a that the Revolution show is Sunday, March fifth. Yeah, it's coming up. Three weeks. Three weeks. Two and a half weeks. I only have one match with three weeks. The, the, the first thing on cage side seats have popped up, which. I don't. I'm not a big cage side seats person, but they uh, said re- the Revolution match card one official match with three weeks to go. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's not good. So we will see. We will see. But uh, yeah, we got, we got Raw tonight too. So hopefully, maybe we'll get some more answers there too. Yeah, Raw is currently on right now. So hopefully, you are recording. Uh, I don't think I am, but I'm going to run downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> try so. to get try to get the rest of it. Yep. So, all right. Well, we are going to start the Valentine's Day special with the ladies. We're going to bring them in here now and uh, we're going to have a fun one. Let's do it. Come get on the train. (laughs) Good, man. Ain't easy. All right, welcome into our special Valentine's Day show edition of the Podski, and we have myself and Allison along with Mr. and Mrs. Andretti, and we are going to play a little game with the couples, and I will let Andretti take it from here on describing exactly what we're doing here today. 
Okay. Are you, you going to say hi or are you going to be antisocial with the listeners? Oh, I'm here in spirit. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> all right. So this is what I got. Okay. So, you know, first off, um, this is all in good fun and I hope everyone understands that. <laughs> so yeah, I came up, uh, I came up with this concept because I'm trying to win a Marconi award. Uh, I know I'm well on my way to accomplishing that goal already. So that's, that's a good thing. But uh, so the, uh, the format here for this Valentine's day show um, is all four of us um, individually uh, went through the AEW and the WWE rosters. We picked five superstars from each roster that we believe we believe quote unquote, <laughs> our spouses would think are attractive. Okay. So here, that, that's what we're doing. We're just going through this. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's all in good fun here. Uh, we also picked five of our own. Okay. So that we can see um, exactly how far are we, how far off we are with all of this stuff. So that'll be funny. I can't, I can't wait to hear the picks. So everybody will give, uh, give their picks for their spouses. Um, then they'll counter with their own five from each roster and hopefully hilarity will ensue and it'll be uh, it'll be great audio here. <laughs> all right well you guys want to are you guys going first yeah man we can go first so you know i, I had a couple thoughts uh first off with everything um it, it was surprisingly harder than i expected this to be um for for both the ones that i picked for her and even for my for my own picks you know it's it's, it's going to be harder for them you know obviously they don't really watch the product as much as you and i do um they don't really know people's people's backstories as much as as much as what what we do with with our fandom but um that's you know maybe that maybe that makes the whole thing easier i don't know um but i, I did i really did honestly, i know more than i'd like to yeah well that's that's good she i'm sure my <laughs> wife uh here probably also knows more about wrestling than she she probably cares though yeah point. i think at this point i treated this as wwe tinder and i whether i was like right or left <laughs> people because i basically based this on headshots on the website yeah i mean that, that's 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 it. that's what you're supposed to do but i mean I, I did i did honestly try my best to not be influenced uh by kind of what i know about certain wrestlers from their from their past or the, you know, their their stories or whatever but i do admit that it was pretty difficult and i i did my best to try to try to keep that out of it but you know it, it, it was it was interesting because you know doing my own picks for myself um especially as you get older you know how you view people changes right I mean when you're in your in your teens or your 20s whatever um I think we can all probably agree that that attraction is is extremely physical at that point in your life especially at that point in your life at least at least at first but as you get older um, you start to be attracted more to what actually makes people who they are <laughs> so so that kind of made this a little bit tough for me um, which I, I, I did not really foresee that happening, but, you know, just in trying to, to take things at face value. So to that end, I, I think that with my own, with my own picks, um, it's kind of been a mix of both, but I, I, I have tried my best to keep my own personal opinions about what I know about people out of the equation. If that, if that makes sense. That was way too hard to do. I couldn't do yeah, that. I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> don't, get, don't look at this. You don't get to cheat. I'm not cheating. Okay. All right. Um, we'll, we'll start, we'll start with the WWE first here for, for her. Okay. 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 So I had, you know, in, in classic, uh, classic me fashion here, Baker, of course I have honorable mentions with everything. So oh my goodness. <laughs> first honorable <laughs> mention, the first honorable man. Now look, we're doing, I, we're doing more than five. We had to I am doing, oh, I, boy. I put, I put effort into what I present <laughs> on the pods. This is very serious. Okay. okay. This is Valentine's Day. This is a really important time in, in our lives. So, you know, for my first uh, my, my first honorable mention, um, I picked J.D. McDonough as the first honorable mention. I got to look these up Why he go says ahead, that. Go ahead and, and look I, it up. It's like, fine. I can I can even Google it too here if, if you want to. Just Google the guy's name. What did you say? J.D. Yeah. McDonough. I'll pull it up here in the, in the right here. Yeah. Yeah. That guy is. It's right here. I guess. So the reason why I picked JD McDonough as the first honorable mention for her oh gosh. Um, is <laughs> it's because as a as a as a uh, her having Irish heritage, I know that she kind of fancies herself as an Irish princess on horseback. <laughs> so I had to pick an Irish guy on here at some point. But the 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 reason why he did not make the cut with the five is because his head is twice the size of the rest of his body. Yeah, yeah it's weird. <laughs> The lack of shoulders is a <laughs> He's doing what he can here. I mean, it, I'm not here to bury him. Oh, yeah, I made fun of him today. Yeah, just bury the poor guy. Oh. Just buried him. <laughs> he's, just, he's your country mate. You're just buried his ass. All right, anyway, okay. So the, the second one I had on here 
um, for, for the honorable mention was Rick Boogs. And I had to put him on here because Rick Boogs is just a, a lovable fucking idiot. And I thought that it was real funny with him. The guy, you know, he is what he is. What, what are your thoughts why, on Rick Why Boogs? does he look like a Freddie Mercury on steroids? <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's what he is. I mean, he's just, trying to, he's just trying to make a buck here. I mean... Okay. Okay. Right. He's just who you like or who she would actually be attracted to. These are these are the honorable mentions this that are a little funnier. Goes, They're actually. a little funnier here with the honorable <laughs> mentions. It's pretty much in our relationship. It's usually whatever <laughs> what he loves, what Mr. Andretti likes. Edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever Mr. Andretti Next likes. one here, I put Kevin Owens on here. Um, I think the tattoos are probably a little bit much for you. They're a little oh. they're a little aggressive. Oh, the lack of he a looks, neck also. He looks too much like our brother in law. <laughs> um okay so for the next one for the honorable mentions I, I put cody on here for the honorable mentions but i will say that i think that what's going to disqualify cody from this is the neck tat and the bad dyed hair job what do you yeah, think i mean we don't have to go like super white platinum to it cody it's all gonna fall good out looking soon. guy though yeah yeah it's all gonna fall out soon though man like <laughs> That that peroxide takes a beating. You can't you can't badmouth him too much because Baker might have might have a, an aneurysm over there okay. if you if you badmouth Cody okay. Rhodes too much. Okay, so for the next one, I put Montez Ford. I personally think that Montez Ford is a very handsome man. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I chose somebody else, but like, <laughs> sure, yes, he's a fine specimen. He's a little he's a little goofy. He gets a little goofy. Yeah. Um. Okay, so for the for the actual picks that I have, oh my okay, gosh, really so we're done. Actually... We're done with the honorable mention. So, wow. um, for the um, for the actual picks, my number five for her is Elias. Oh. <laughs> what do you not oh. like about Elias? Everything. What's wrong with him? And this is exactly why I didn't want to do this because they all look like this. They don't all look like this. <laughs> yeah, okay, like here's this. why I picked Elias for you. Okay. Okay. Elias is from Pennsylvania. He's from Pittsburgh. Okay? okay. So if you and I get divorced and you marry Elias, you can talk to him. You have a little bit of commonality with Elias. Yeah, and he has multiple personality disorder, like I do. So yeah. I think that you'd be okay with that. Guy. I love you, but it's not because you're from Pittsburgh. <laughs> it, it probably should. <laughs> Okay, so number four, um, I picked Drew Gulak is number four. What do you think? What are your thoughts on Gulak? Oh, God. <laughs> a, a Silver Lake hipster that does WWE. Okay, he's good looking in his own way. Sure. Okay, I th which I thought you like guys who are a little more unassuming. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I do. <laughs> so I put that he's a Philly guy. He fit in really well with your brother-in-law. He's good looking in his own right. And he's very respected in his field. Okay. So that's why he's on there. Next. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Holy cow. It's a tough crowd over here. Okay. So when I you put. you my picks, you'll know why. For the next one here, for number three, I picked Dolph Ziggler. Okay. Fine. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty good looking guy, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're in that Eastern <laughs> European block thing. Yeah. You know, he's a little bit of a questionable sexual history with him in the past, but <laughs> <laughs> other than that, you know, we don't we don't gotta we don't gotta go too into it here, but that that's 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 what it is. Okay, so number two. That's fine. Grayson Waller for number two. Sure. I mean, he looks kind of like an asshole, but imagine that. Yeah, he's <laughs> Wonder why I picked him for you, that guy Great. at number two. Do I choose assholes in my life? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's here's my thought on Waller. So I know that you like foreigners. I do. Okay. So he's very full of himself. Yep. But he might have a big heart. Okay. He has okay. a lot of pride for where he's from, which is okay. Australia. Okay. Oh yeah. See, I do. Okay. So that was a good one. Okay. That was a really good one. See, I'm I'm I know what the hell I'm doing with this. Okay. So for, for my number one pick for you. For um for WWE and WWE Sepik Randy Orton. Oh God no. No oh God no. Not, not even like on the, like any list would I pick him. Take the okay. Take the tattoos no. out. No, yeah. even the tattoos. No. Oh no. I am shocked. No. I am shocked. You know, uh, one time when we were, I was in Phoenix. No. When I was in Phoenix, 
No. The Graws had a little bit too much to drink. Okay. And he admitted has... to me and his wife that he thought Randy Orton had beautiful eyes. Okay. He has maybe, I, maybe these pictures aren't doing him justice, but anybody that has boobs bigger than me is absolutely out. He looks like a, it's a good looking guy. Yeah. Oh, sure. is, it, is it the mustache? Like, is it the facial hair? Because sometimes he gets yeah. even. I actually clicked we, on one we got, photo that we got, both, like, we got both. We got both pulled Yeah. Out the okay. one that is like a little bit cleaner cut and okay yeah okay okay a little bit better he i have up. a bad feeling that mr andretti might not know what women want I, that's we're gonna we're gonna I, I would not maybe vote early on that alice <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would vote early okay we'll see. We'll see. okay so that is who i had for you for the wwe guy so what what were your top five well okay well i can only got i only really kind of got to three okay <laughs> was waller on your list no okay well that's four list. that's four nobody was on your list okay. oh yeah but i would have like yeah i would have chose him again i was like going off of some thumb tiles on I, I understand i know headshots i can't believe um, i was that far i was that far off I liked I liked Wesley. He had a okay. I I didn't go with Wesley because of the dreads. Oh no, he had a Michael. And B. he's got a lot of tattoos. Yes, he had a Michael B. Jordan kind of vibe. Okay, going okay. For him, so I was like, okay, you look like a normal human being that mm -hmm. I would be out in the, hey, the real world. He's a good looking guy, and he's super super talented. And not like a like yes, and not like a character. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, and then I chose because you told me the WWE. <laughs> didn't necessarily specify wrestlers okay that's fine so i chose andy shepherd who the hell is that he's a brit broadcaster for nxt i have no idea who that is <laughs> no idea who that is either i gotta look this up you said nxt he's the nxt yeah andy, andy shepherd andy shepherd he's on here he's on my list okay let's see what this guy looks like okay fine yeah mm -hmm. i can see it this is definitely more my style you know, you know a real great. man a real man gets in the ring it doesn't <laughs> sit behind a desk. Ends up well in a suit. Has a nice British accent. If I'd have known we were going for geeks, I probably would have picked him. Uh, for you. Well, again, <laughs> not necessarily my type. Oh, he's anyway. absolutely your type. Oh You're yeah, right. no, like the, the wrestlers. Okay, I got you. I got you. The okay. wrestlers. <laughs> okay. Uh, and along the same lines, Mike Rome. Mike Rome. Mike Rome. Is he on here? Yeah. Yeah, he's the announcer. The yeah. ring announcer. See? Mike Rome for is he WWE or NXT? He's he's both. He's main roster. See? I don't know if I know who nice this guy is. Suit. Oh, he, he looks a little bit like. Uh, he was in the ring. They said at some point in time. And what was the guy position. Baker? What was the announcer's name for NXT that got let go? Tom Phillips. Yeah, Tom Phillips. He looks a little bit like Tom Phillips. A little bit, yeah. No, okay. I, okay. I can I can see I, this good looking dude. Okay, makes sense. Sure. Okay, so nice guy. What's that? Tom Phillips is like they, he seems too nice. That's indeed, indeed. Why? <laughs> I would well, choose so you want to be you want to be around people who are really nice? Yes, that would be lovely <laughs> if that was the case. We've been together for eight years. Oh, longer than that. It feels. Like. I've been I've been the heel in your life for eight years. Yes. <laughs> I've been the heel champ for eight years. <laughs> no baby face in this territory, man. Ooh. Okay. Well, that was my WWE. List. Okay, do you want to? Do we want to keep going with the AEW now, or do we want to switch? Oh, we can switch. We'll do it. We'll do our WWE if you want. Okay, yeah. Do do your WWEs. Can I just say that I think I took people's personalities into account? So did I. So yeah, my list is not only based on looks. Okay, <laughs> it might get off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so for. Uh, Allison's WWE uh, number five. I have the Miz. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> and I only put the Miz because I felt like he was just uber like confident. He like he would be way too confident. He gets in the mood. But, okay. He's like a little like squirrel. Like he never stops. That is true. He does. Yeah. All right. Well, and then number four, based off of no. what? Yeah, you already saw my list. You cheater. So. Yeah. Number four, I had Randy Orton. So clearly he's not as good looking as what uh, Andretti and I think he is. So Randy very good looking. I think he's good looking, dude. Because no, even... <laughs> <laughs> my note was uh, he's freaking Randy Orton. Look at him. That was my note. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, what, Allison, what are your thoughts on that? You're out, you're out on him too? 
Uh, yeah, no, not at all. Not even a little. Like, I actually looked at him and I was like, I swear if John puts him on my list, I'm going to be kind of upset. <laughs> if I sit, when he comes out, I'm like, oh, why? Like, I say that all the time. But I'm telling you, you don't listen. <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Tough crowd. It is. It's really tough over here. So for number three, I put Logan Paul. Oh, I think that was my number three. No, he was my number. I put Logan Paul because he's weirdly athletic and it just he he would be weirdly athletic and that would probably just be like, yeah, that that's what I was going for. Yeah, I semi like that everybody hates him for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. And so you're so Allison, you're good with the, with long hair. Yeah, yeah. John had okay. long hair at one point. Having, having seen Logan Paul in person, I'd still want to punch him in the face. <laughs> well, I thought we were just so like, well, okay. Yeah, no, I did say personality. I guess that's. Yeah. yeah. Well, his personality kind of looks awesome. like you a little bit. Smidge. Yeah. So maybe. I can see that. I can see that actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number two, I had Seth Rollins. No. Okay. I can't handle his highlights. No, oh. he ruined himself. Okay. Yes. But without the highlights, he'd be all right. Yeah, but he has highlights, so he's not on my list. Okay. What, what about when he had the one big highlight in the front? Well, she yeah. didn't know him back then. I've okay. seen it. But, oh she re but she asked a little, whenever I had the rumble on, she asked, why does he have highlights in his hair now? <laughs> and I was like, well, he had it before. But... Exactly. <laughs> okay. Looks, looks like he has like drippy, wet, curly hair yeah. over Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. You always think is Roman Reigns. I. It is true. I always <laughs> think he's Roman Reigns. He's like the mini Roman. Yes. I always do think he's Roman That's Reigns, funny. and they both have the same hairstyle. Yes. With the drippy wet. Gel. And so did Razor Ramon and Bret Hart and everyone else with dark. <laughs> hair. Uh, so for number one, I put Cody. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the only reason I put him on as number one, obviously, uh, I I put him on because of his list. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. He was. He was my number one, and I put his list in all caps. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just I like it. So, so I got two out of your five. Yes. Okay. Okay. My first one was obviously Cody Rhodes. Um, I also think he kind of looks like you, but whatever. Do um, I just look like everybody. No, I'm attracted <laughs> to people that look like oh, you. Okay, fair enough. Uh, my number two was Logan Paul. Um, I already said my reasons. Number three was Roman Reigns, but like minus the veneers, like teeth before veneers, because it just looks like he has one long rectangle tooth. And I don't really, I'm not a fan. <laughs> you don't like the hair, right? The but hair for you? It's just like, well, I, fine if it wasn't so drippy, gross with gel water. I think like if we were, you know, hanging out, I don't think his hair always looks like that. Like I thought pretty deep into this. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to date them while they're wrestling it's like you know yeah. no <laughs> like go shower and then we'll go out i mean i i think i actually think that roman reigns is, is the best looking guy in wrestling i really do he's like pretty but not like i like it yes yeah. i would agree um but oh that was three okay four was edge I uh, want, so his I was, jawline have you seen it <laughs> um I was, gonna nice. put, I was gonna put edge but i wasn't he but was, you failed yes yeah. anyways <laughs> Um, and my fifth one was Elias because he's so See? funny and he plays guitar and he's, I don't think he's bad looking, but he's a hell, he's a hell of a, a hell of a guitarist. If he guy. plays guitar, you know, that's always, and a, he sings. That's always, yes. Okay. Okay. If he sings and plays guitar, you know, like that is like two extra notches <laughs> up yeah. at any moment in time. I can actually, I, I'm surprised that I got two out of the five. I am sad that you only got two. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I can hopefully do better. You won't. Oh, yeah, I know. The <laughs> AEW one for me was hard with her. I thought, yeah. oh, they are not good looking. <laughs> they are just there. Like, I was, I thought I, I'm glad you put the WWE link first because had I gone to AEW, I probably would just throw the phone at the wall or something and been like, Man, absolutely not. They're killing the town here. These guys are trying hard. Maybe it's because I'm younger. I don't know, but I, thought aew was easier oh wow because they Sorry. have more uh -huh. what do they because like i, I guess they have a younger ish roster they do they have younger yeah, crowds yeah. that's probably what it is plus i've watched more aew so like i know i like people because i know who like their character oh okay yeah that's why it was hard for you not no, just based off the headshots AEW was easier easier for you i'm sorry yeah 
Do you guys want to go next? Yeah. Do you want to do your WWE picks for me? Sure. I'm sorry. Yes. We need to do uh, Mr. Andretti's picks. Mr. Andretti's picks. All right. Picks. Let's, let's hear it. I can't wait. Okay. So I went with Charlotte Flair because, you know, Ric Flair. And I was like, I got to pick a blonde in some way. So uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have put her in my top five because she looks like Jane Lynch now and has had a lot of work done. She has had a lot of work done. Yes. But I can see why I, I could see it being hovering around the fifth spot. Okay. Uh, next was Becky Lynch. Because she has that goth metal thing and that's music you like. So purely off of that, knowing nothing about her. <laughs> you didn't, I would have I would have thought more for her with the red hair. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I, I think she'd probably be right around the top five. Okay. Um, what about, I couldn't tell, I couldn't, I couldn't decide which one, but there's probably a Japanese wrestler in your like top oh, five. So I went with Asuka for Asuka. Okay, Asuka. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if she'd be in my top five, but I mean, from a from a respect standpoint, she would certainly be in my top five. Okay, Blair Davenport. Okay, also same thing. Plus, probably the closest to me with the hair when we first met. I can, yeah, I, I I did not put her in my own picks of top five, but I can see why you would think she would be around right right in the top five. So I don't think I don't think any of them were my actual top five, but they were all really good picks. I'll, I'll say that. Okay. Who was your number one? Uh, I I actually went with Rhea Ripley. Okay. <laughs> because okay. I met her and I was like, man, I almost put her on my list. <laughs> And put them on yours instead. Put her on yours instead. So uh, the reason why she did not make my top five is because she has so many tattoos now that it's that it's too much okay. for me. Yeah, but she's really tall. She's really strong. Yeah, but I think I think with me now I'm going to give you my my own picks for top five. Okay, and you're going to see that they're pretty similar. Okay, okay? so okay. and I'll I'll tell you why. So okay. for mine, where are my AEWs? Okay. Um. I put I put for my two honorable mentions. I actually put Charlotte and I put Rhea Ripley for the honorable mentions. So those are those are two those are two good picks. Um, I put Zoe Stark as my fifth. Um, I can pull it up right here. I, I got it. All right. Um, I don't I don't really know exactly why, but I think that she's she's super talented and she's pretty in her own way, if that makes sense. And I kind of like unconventionally pretty women no offense to you you are conventionally pretty but tr typically traditionally speaking I, I i usually end up thinking it uh uh unconventionally you know pretty pretty women are usually pretty but um so for my number four i put raquel rodriguez for number four and i think that's probably the same kind of vein of what you were talking about with with uh with rhea ripley because she's a really tall super athletic woman that is really good in the ring mm -hmm. so that's kind of in charlotte kind of the same thing sure. she's really tall too yeah, so yeah. i think you're you're probably right about that kind of set yeah um for my third you picked becky lynch i actually went with isla dawn as my third and i think it's going to be really similar when you see this because i remember how i said about the hair right yeah so that's kind of that's actually. her right there it was between Becky Lynch and her, and I did. Yeah, and I th I think Becky is a little bit more like like uh, I don't know how to say it. Like I don't know, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it, so I'm not going to say it. But like, I, there's, there's, I, I felt like she was just a little bit different than <laughs> a little bit different than Becky. Um, so for my number two, walking a tightrope on that. One. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to say anything bad about anybody. I just don't <laughs> know how to say it. So I don't want to sound like an idiot. So that, that, that's it. But. Um, I put Stephanie McMahon as my number two. I almost put her on the list, actually. And you know, obviously, she's she's a very very pretty woman. She always has been. She's in the position of power, and she's really good at what she did before she stepped away. So that's why I had her at number two. But um, my number one, which I don't know if you were even anywhere in the ballpark with this, but I actually picked Dakota Kai as my number one. That was and a Look, I don't have a reason for it. There's not, there's not really a reason for it other than the, the just I, I can't put my finger on why it is other than the fact that I think she's just super talented and and you know pretty and and she's never really gotten a fair shake and that might have something to do with why I had her number one. So those were my top five. All right, but those are pretty good picks. Yeah, you were pretty close on all those. Okay, great. 
gold star for me. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see now, the, the the women so far have been much closer than what me and you have been banged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So my WWE picks. You want me to go? Yes. Who, okay. who, who do you think um, is on my list? Number one, I picked Carmella. I think that you've told me that she's hot before, but I don't know. Does it really matter for that? So, I mean, like I sat here for like three hours and researched these people. So, um, <laughs> Allison has two sheets of paper that she made on an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> That's awesome. They have charts. There's charts on here. Okay, my number two is Becky Lynch because she's like actually really good at wrestling. And when she, um, oh wait, no, that's a different one. Never mind. But yeah, she's pretty and she's good at wrestling. Okay. Uh, number three, I picked Chelsea Green because when she smiles, her upper lip doesn't go away. And I know you don't know that. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I picked her. <laughs> I was really stretching here because um, Scarlett Bordeaux, she's kind of pretty. She was, <laughs> she's actually an honorable mention. Oh, goody. Okay. Um, and Indy Hartwell because I did not know who else to pick. That be that would be the ghost of Bobby Winters number one pick I think yes the well for his <laughs> he did all, he he's did number all. one pick all the time she's pretty yes um so for my um yeah so yeah all right now my number five was um Scarlet yeah yes pretty close that's good pretty close number four I had uh, Gigi Dolan I don't even know who that is. I swear she was not on that list today. She is. She, she is. She's on there. I'm gonna be upset. If you if type in her name, you'll you'll know who she is right away. Yeah, she's uh, unmistakable. Oh, are you kidding? What? Oh my gosh! I looked at her and I was like, yeah, not even gonna bother. I know he wouldn't pick her. <laughs> she looks psycho. Well, it's just the eye black. That's gross. Oh no. Well, she was. Hurried. She was start married doing my makeup to, uh, like that. She was married to uh, Darby Allen. Yeah. Is Darby or no? Oh, well, I don't. You, I thought that was your reason. I mean, she, might, she might not be pretty anymore after her head went through a door twice on on NXT last uh, week. Oh my! Uh, number three, I went with Tiffany Stratton. I was gonna put her. She was on there, and then I took her off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, I went with Chelsea Green. Because <laughs> of her lip. Yes. Really? Yeah. That's funny. The mouth. Yep. It, mouth is a huge the, deal. Everybody's up with you people in a speech impediment. No, it's, it's not. It's not the way she talks. Whenever people smile, if their upper lip goes away, John, it like freaks him out, and he won't. He like hates the person. Like he'll see, picture, <laughs> he'll like see a picture of someone, and he's like, oh my gosh, I hate her. And I'm like, why? And he's like, look at her mouth. I'm like, well, she can't help it. She didn't pick her lips. Like what? He gets very upset. It's really funny. Yeah. It's a yeah. Um, at number one, I picked Rhea Ripley. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. I literally looked at that and I was like, no, there's no way. It's okay. So if you see her outside of like the black, but I makeup, saw her on that picture on that list. I know. <laughs> I, that's why I said you wouldn't be able to guess it. Yeah. It would be it's hard. just it's just the tab the tattoos. There's just too many. It's, She's got too many tattoos. She looks like a man. I see it's just no here. We'll, we can look at it later. Okay. Well you we'll, can defend it later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was my WWE list. So uh do we want to do AEW now? Yeah, let's do it. I can do mine for I can do mine for uh the missus here. Let me, let me pull it up. Okay. So you're definitely gonna have to look up these guys for me because well, I that's have fine. No that's idea fine. who these guys are. Okay, so for my top or one of my my first honorable mention here um, is going to be a guy that I that I like a lot that I think you'll think is is, is a handsome fellow, Tony Nice. Ooh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know what to say. You don't like Tony Nice? No. Look at that picture. Look at that smile. No. Way too much East Coast vibe. Oh come on! It's, it's okay. you're married to an East Coast. Vibe. I know. I believe me. It's not because you know you're from the East Coast. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> next, next honorable mention. I picked a guy. Uh, I picked a guy that cleans up very well. Preston Vance. Oh, he was that. Guy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he looks really good in this picture. Yeah, he was on my list. Okay. See. Yeah. I'm really good at this. No, you're not really good, but I mean, I had a very limited list to choose from. Okay, so next honorable mention here, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. 
yeah, he like has this like Aussie vibe to him. Is he Aussie? Is he Australian? No, that's that's um, um, Luke Perry's kid. Oh, so funny. Yeah, it's Luke he Perry's does, son. Yeah. Okay, sure. I put I, I my my notes for him were boyishly handsome is a mute which you like you like a man don't speak oh okay. and he's luke perry's kid so wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't hear that but all right so for the next the last honorable mention that i had was anthony bowens i don't know and don't get don't get too don't get too attracted here he plays for the other team i'm just telling you oh, that right okay. now <laughs> what do you think okay yeah yeah good looking awesome. dude right good looking dude okay all right so for my number five um, the official ones here for AEW for you. My number five was Ethan Page. What do yeah, you think? He was on my list. See? Yeah, he did better this time. Yeah, he's. I mean, but these was <laughs> like, I only was able to with three. I only came up with three. Really? Yes. So my notes on him, I put he lost a ton of weight. He's goofy when he needs to be, can also be serious. Handsome fella, Canadian. Okay. Those are my notes on him. Okay, so for my number four for you, AEW, I picked Cash Wheeler. Mm, no oh man <laughs> i'm telling no. you not at all not at all mm -mm. i mean I, unassuming team player sure. career sure. tag team guy good looking in his own way tats are kind of stupid but he doesn't have a ton of them <laughs> sure i mean but again this is this was rough that's a good looking guy right okay no. <laughs> all it's right like okay so for my uh my number three for AEW. It's gonna be reaching for the sky, Scorpio Sky. Mm. What do you think? Uh, yeah, may, yeah, sure. I mean, because he's got a Laker jersey on in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know where he's from, but he was in a tag team called um, um SCU, which was what uh SoCal Unlimited. Was that what it was? Uh, uncensored. Uncensored, yeah. yeah. But there he uh, yeah, I think he might be from out here. Uh, I put hard worker, very handsome. When he's a bad guy, he's a little unbelievable in the role, which makes me think he's a very good person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for my for my number two, uh, again, I know I'm you, I know you like, I know you like Europeans. So okay. I pick Claudio as number two. Okay, I mean, sure, he's got this rugged kind of yeah. Jason Statham kind of thing going. <laughs> I guess. And my notes on him, I, I like about the accents. I know you're like European, super yeah. respected guy. Seems like a very good guy. You never hear a negative thing about him. Okay. So that's that's all. That's why I thought. So for my number one pick, this is going to blow you away. This is going to be the one. This is the <laughs> one that I've been waiting to give you. Okay, because I know it's I know it's right. Okay, I picked Dustin Rhodes as number one. Oh God. Because no. he looks the most like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. hurts. <laughs> i also want to punch him in the face what do you why why do you want to punch him for ah no just and he, he has an alcohol problem uh, so. yeah. <laughs> well, these are, did. not attractive <laughs> these are things that well are these are things much... that you've shown precedence to, to be okay i with. don't know why <laughs> i don't know why but these are things and he did he did it. serenade his estranged wife on a on an airplane intercom he, he, like me he is a hopeless romantic okay and it's <laughs> that was not a romantic serenading <laughs> that was bad God, look at this makeup in the touch absolutely well he doesn't no. wear the makeup away out no, but in public it just looks, ugh. Oh no! <laughs> oh man! I have tough, like very crowd. strong visual visceral reaction to this. Well, he looks. <laughs> what about here? Nope. Okay, well, I'm not going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so I did okay with the AEW guys. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. So what do you what do you got now? Let's let's hear what what your well, what again, your genius picks are here. I was only able to pick three, and you already know two of them. So well, who, who were the two? Who were the two? I, chose Preston Vance. Okay. Okay. I chose Ethan Page. Okay. And I chose Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson. I always get him confused with Moriarty. So let me pull him up here. I don't know which what what group is he in, Bag? Is he in a group? Yeah. He looks like a friend. In the factory. He's in the fact he okay, so he yeah, that's yeah, good looking dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. That would be my top pick. That's a good pick. Okay. Good. I told you I'm really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are up. All right, so for Allison's, uh, I have no honorable mentions for this one. 
But uh, for number five, I have MJF. Okay. No? Wrong. Okay. Order. <laughs> Order? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, at least I got that right. <laughs> Just not in the right spot. Not even close. No? Okay. Uh, number four, I had Orange Cassidy. Yep. Okay, I had him only because the, his non-caring while caring. Yep. That's why, but he's not number four, but he's on my list. Okay. Uh, I picked Adam Cole at number three. Wrong. No. Oh, I, I thought he has a kind smile. <laughs> when have I ever looked at someone and said, Never, mm, but I like looks, them because they have a kind but smile. But he looks very nice. And I, 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 didn't put, I didn't pick Adam Cole for anything for her because I, I <laughs> thought he was too short. <laughs> uh, number two, I picked Christian. No. Uh, if I would have picked Edge instead of Christian, yes. I, would, uh, I went with the wrong tag team partner. Yeah, did. Uh, and number one, I went well, Wardlow. Oh, my. No. No? I feel like it's now he's <laughs> no. just like, he's so large. Like, he's so big. <laughs> it's just weird. Oh, he's just too large? Yeah. Okay. Like, I feel like they would have to get him a special chair at dinner or something. You know? hmm. <laughs> Very literal. Um, <laughs> like the whole way to the dinner part yeah oh yeah <laughs> so who was your actual top five okay number five was chris jericho like i had to put him on he's just good at everything i would prefer his haircut but that's okay like across the board he can do no wrong in like, my opinion if like whenever he had short hair in wwe yeah okay or just not that long really okay yeah Okay, number four was Jungle Boy, um, mainly just because he's Luke Perry's son, and I like his music taste. Uh, number three was Orange okay. Cassidy, because I said the fact that he doesn't care about anything, and he kind of looks like you, like, because you're going to be that for Halloween. <laughs> um, number two was Adam Page. I like his hair and his attitude. And my number one was actually MJF. Uh, yeah. Like, I love how mean he is. I like I, I like his scarf. I don't know why I like his scarf, but I just like it because it's his. Yeah, I like women that. don't like nice people. That's why I was gonna put Adam Page, and I decided not to for some reason. Like I was either like when Adam... he when he just walks out and is just like chugging a beer and just like whatever. I like that. Okay, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I was gonna put him, but I put Adam Cole instead. I picked the wrong Adam. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> the baby. I don't like that. Oh, okay, I'm not a fan. Hmm. All right, like. <laughs> all right so uh andretti do you want to do your uh women's uh aw yeah let me pull it up here <laughs> let's see where we're at here i feel like I, we already know where this one's going okay where the heck did i put it okay so from i'm doing mine right for me oh wait, i'm doing women yeah. <laughs> let me for you <laughs> <laughs> Did you like reverse this? No. How, how did I get confused here? What's the, where are we? I'm supposed to go. Okay, you're supposed to go. Your um, your who you think? Uh, yeah, I got to go drinking. <laughs> I got to go drinking at night. Okay. All right, here's who I picked for you. Gotcha. Okay. I'm like, what are you doing? You just love talking so much. I, I, I like in, I'm cool. I got a concussion in the ring. I don't know where I was at. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I chose. Number five, and this is only for the name. <laughs> oh my God, okay. <laughs> because I was like, F it. <laughs> okay. Willow Nightingale. You know, okay. Let me say something about uh, for Willow Nightingale. I hated her guts. She is actually a breath of fresh air when she's on TV. She's not typically someone I would be attracted to, but I think she seems like a really nice person that I would like to, to have a conversation with. Great. Not a bad, not a bad pick. I like the name. A little unconventional, not a bad pick. I like the first name and the last name. I like the name. Uh, she looks like an that? 80s aerobic constructor or something. Yeah, she yeah, does. Absolutely. She looks like she could gain glow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, number four, because again, on the exotic side, I chose Yuku Sukazaki. Yuku <laughs> Sukazaki is very pretty for, for, she looks like a little kid, but yeah, I mean, she, <laughs> she does. she's like, the, the, her nickname is like the magical princess or something like that. Oh so my she, gosh. she is pretty good. She's pre okay. That, that's not a bad pick. Okay. Uh, and then I went with 
Tony Storm because you have to have a blonde bombshell in there somehow. I don't know why you think that. I don't Maybe. know. I just like I was trying to get a well-rounded. I, I, I understand. Group of women I understand. Just okay. In case. Storm, I actually thought about putting on mine. I did not, but I, I, she's hovering around the fifth spot. That's yeah. a good, pretty good pick. Um, and then because I know you are from a very rural part of Pennsylvania, God. so you're used to a certain type. Oh my of woman God, where is this? There. Where is this going? And because of the name, because of her last name, I went with Jamie Hader. Jamie Hader, yeah, okay. <laughs> I had to sell Jamie Hader on everybody in the chat. No one wanted to put. No one liked Jamie Hader. I was the I, only. You did, I Baker. You were. Only. You were the only. You were the one to push the man. But like, only honorable mention. <laughs> and the reason why I had her as my honorable mention for myself was because I don't like her hair and I chose her. <laughs> she's too mean. <laughs> so that's why I didn't her last put her. name is Hater. I... And you could be very mean yourself. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. That's not that's not a bad pick. Is that your first one? That was my favorite. Okay. And your first pick was Britt Baker. Okay. Because she is the dentist and you do like to talk about her a lot. Yeah. Being a dentist. Do you know she's that like, she... Do you know she's a dentist? Yes. Did you know she's a dentist? Yes, I do know did that. You, you know, she's a dentist. Did like, you, see did that girl you know... in the ring? See that girl in the ring? She's a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that she's from Pittsburgh and I she's did. a Penn State graduate? I actually, I think that's usually the three things that come up when <laughs> I walk into a room and Britt Baker is in the ring because it's like, oh, did you know she was in Pittsburgh? And she was in Penn State. <laughs> and she's a dentist. Oh, my God. So. I'm getting killed over here. I need a hot tag. <laughs> I got to get out of the ring. That was my number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those are good. Those are good picks. Okay. So for mine, my top five, um, I, oh. I put I put haters as, the, as my honorable mention. I actually really was... was uh, I'm um, really going to put her in my in my top five, and I but I went with my my number five. I went with Emmy Sakura is my number five, and here I'll, I'll put the picture up. Okay, so the other exotic choice. So the reason why I went with Emmy Sakura is because she actually started promotions in Japan, mm. and she's really good. So I, I for me that would be somebody that I would want to have a conversation with. She looks like the actress from The Boys. Yeah, a little bit. She's a little older than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she was my number five. Uh, my number four uh, was Hikaru Shida. Here, I'll pull a picture of her too. I think she might have been my other choice besides Steve. Yeah. yeah I mean, no, yeah. no, you know, no real reason other than just you know, very, very pretty girl, right? And she's she's good in the rank too, obviously. Um, so my number three was Britt Baker, which you got, you know, you got really close. The I think you, from yeah, she's from actually she's, she's from Pittsburgh. She's, <laughs> she's actually passed. And graduated from Penn State. She went to Penn State. Yeah, she, she did I tell you that? Did. did I tell you that? I think she did. I think you did. Okay, so yeah, she uh, she was my number three. You had her at two for me, which is really close. I had her number one for you. Oh, you did have her. Okay, so we, number one, number three. Um, I put Statlander. I put Chris Statlander as my number two. And again, she is, you know, pretty in her own right, not outright pretty like everybody in the world would think but she's very strong in a ring yeah. she's really really powerful she's always working out like she's really like a powerhouse so i picked her as my as my number two yeah. um then my number one i picked jade cargill as my number one for aew i don't know if you remember seeing her or not but that's who i put as number one okay for mm -hmm. yeah i almost chose i mean she just looks like a million bucks in the ring i mean she's i've never seen a, a female superstar have a physique like that like her presence is really really powerful on mm -hmm. the screen so that's why, you know, I kind of put her at the, but here's a picture of her just in normal clothes mm -hmm. as my number one. Pretty. Yeah. Those are pretty good. You you were pretty close with yours. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're, uh, I think we're good here, Bake. I think you guys are up. All right. I go. Yes. Okay. Um, I had a really hard time picking five. So bunny <laughs> is my number five. Just, no, I know. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. I know, but like I was, we were pushing five o'clock and I needed to print these before I left. So well, it was, it's yeah. her, it's her upper lip. I, I know, I know. It's going to be, it could also lip. be the lack of talent in the ring. That too. <laughs> um, number four, I did Tony Storm. Okay. She's on my list. Her style, her 80s style. I would have figured she was on your spec. Yeah. Number three, Penelope Ford. Okay. Penelope's on my list. Okay. Um, Number two, Jamie Hader. Hader is a honorable mention on my list. I don't you like talk about her all the time. I, <laughs> I thought for sure. I thought for sure. If I put her on here, I that one would not be wrong. I know it's the hair. 
like her hair freaks me out sometimes. Allison, her hair is too close to home for us. Yeah, that's why I picked her for you. I don't like the What's hair. That uh huh. What's that mean? Too close to home. It means that we know too many girls back home that have um, hair like that. I don't um, know anybody that has hair like that. I just don't like it. But like, mm -hmm. if she when she doesn't have the hair like that, yes, she'd be in my top five. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, number one was Britt Baker, obviously. Okay. Yes. Because you do the same thing that uh, he does, and it's just constant. Yes. She's a dentist. I don't know if she's actually a dentist. She's that... actually she like wrestles, but she's a dentist. Like she has a degree. Did you know? You know, you know what's really cool about her too is that she went to Penn State. Yeah. And right. And she went to Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my top five uh, was Penelope. Uh, number four was Chris Statlander. Here we go. Uh, number three, I had Jade. Okay. Jade Cargill. Wait, is that actually? Oh, yeah, Doi. Yeah, I almost put her on there, but I didn't know. Yeah, number two, I put Tony Storm. Mm -hmm. And number one, I put Britt Baker. Oh, sweet. Because you know she is a dad. Right. has your last name right Should we share we already share last names mm -hmm. convenient convenient <laughs> right <laughs> awesome we actually did pretty good I was, yeah I, I, yeah i think so i think i probably did the worst out of the four of us pretty much you got all <laughs> <laughs> you got off to a hot start there uh andretti Hey, I couldn't. I couldn't dig out of it. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> dig out of the hole. I should, we should have did the AEW ones first. <laughs> of course, the WWE screws me over like they've been doing for forty years. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I got a question. I got a question for you, Baker. Okay. Who's your man crush in wrestling? Oh, I already know. Oh, mine's Cody. I figured. There were actual tears. <laughs> there were tears when he left AEW. So I already knew the answer to that question. <laughs> it's funny. Who's yours, man? Who's your man crush? Oh, it's Roman Reigns, dude. Yeah, see, that's that's an easy one, I feel like. <laughs> I mean, why? Because would be... you just think he's so good looking that I think that he's I think that he's uh, I, I think he's the most handsome man in wrestling. I really do. <laughs> and he has like a softer voice too, I feel like. <laughs> it's important. It's really important. <laughs> You need a <laughs> maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you to both of the ladies for coming on. The, uh, this was actually a lot of fun, and yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Was did fun. you did you happen to have a girl crush when you went through the pictures? Was there anybody on there? You saw you said real Rhea Ripley, right? Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe in her prior life. Yeah, like a yeah. little less. <laughs> It's it's, it's a little over the top. And now it is. Now it is. She's doing her authentic thing, but not yeah. for me, right? Yeah. What about you, Allison? Do you got a girl crush on anybody? Jade. I've already said that multiple Jade. times. Yeah. She reminds me of the girl that was in um Kanye West fade video. Oh, What's her um, name? Tiana Taylor. Yeah, she reminds me of her. Yeah, she does. Crush on that girl, so they go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> <Not mine. laughs> Awesome. All right. Are we free? I think so. I think you're. <laughs> are you free? Yeah. I don't know. I can sit here and stare at you, but. I mean, do you want to sit here? And I, stare don't, at you? I don't. Okay. Don't okay. That. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks to both of you for coming on. And. Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, every sight and every sound. And I don't know if I'm being foolish. All right, huge thank you to Mrs. Andretti and Allison for coming on this week. Had a lot of fun doing that. Was surprised with a lot of our choices that we made. So hopefully you all enjoyed that. Hopefully you tune in 
uh, next week to the pod ski. And hopefully you checked out the archived episodes. Andretti and I have been on a lot the last couple of weeks, and we're going to be on a lot more as we get closer to WrestleMania season. We got Elimination Chamber this weekend on Peacock, so hopefully you check that out. Uh, last night was Dynamite. Hopefully you watched that too. We got a lot of things coming forward. Hopefully you checked out last week's episode of the NXT Vengeance Day Review. We also had the Royal Rumble Roundtable and the Royal Rumble Review. If you haven't checked those out, please go back and check those out. They were a lot of fun, especially uh, those the Roundtable and the Review had a lot of good guests on for there. So uh, thank you to all the guests and thank you to all of the listeners uh, of the Podski. We are just doing great numbers, doing way better Uh just so much better than I thought we were. So thank you to all the listeners and don't forget to download rate review and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the pod ski. And I want to give it all to you. Yeah, right on. I'm right here for you. I know it's going to be good to you. Yeah, and I'll tell you why, baby.